you want to get us going? Sure. Yeah. Good morning, Courtney. Um, morning. So I wanted to start off just asking about your pitchers because entering the season, um, you know, people were kind of making that the question mark with the team. And right now you're the best ERA since 2019. Just what has it been like to see the pitchers kind of turn what was perceived to be a question mark into a team strength? Um, well, it's <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> it's been great to watch them do that. Um, you know, I, I, I think that um, – I think that they took offense to the questions. Um, and as a coach, you want that because you want your pitchers to have a little bit of edge to them, you know? And I think that, um, that was the question mark. I think that was the question mark going in of like, okay, well, do they have the pitching to be good enough? Do they have the pitching to be solid? And, um, and our pitchers have showed up. So I think that they were offended, but then it was, it's one thing to be offended and it's another thing to do your job and do your job consistently and that's what they've done. Um, and it hasn't been a straight line for the staff. You know, we've had injuries, we've had, um, time off, you know, we had, we lost Rob for a couple of weeks. We lost Reese for seven. Um, and the other pitchers stepped up and, um, and, and did a tremendous job. And, um, I think the thing that's even more impressive is how offensive the game is. Um, and you're looking at scores across the country and, um, and it's, it's never been more offensive and they're doing a, just a, a really great job of countering offenses and, and holding them down and doesn't mean they're perfect. We've had some games get away, you know, but, um, that was in our toughest stretch and, and now, you know, looking at the staff and them being as healthy as they've been all year, um, it's exciting to see the, the body of work that they've had and where they're at right now. And um, I'm just really, really proud of them. Yeah, and then with how good the pitching has been, it seems right now like just – it's honestly like y'all are doing great, of course, with five straight series. It's almost like y'all can reach another level if the offense just breaks through with runners on base. I know that's kind of been like the problem the past couple series. Um, I know if there was a magic formula to solve that, you would. But can you recall any teams in the past who maybe struggled with, you know, scoring runners on base and how they worked through that um, to maybe capitalize on that? Well, I don't think that's something that's unique to us. I think that that's, um, that's everything. I mean, you want to get runners on and you want to have timely hitting and you want to have all those things. And sometimes it's going to work. And sometimes, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap to, um, like this past weekend, like LSU's pitching staff's very strong. Burzon's one of the best we faced all year. Um, and so it's, it's just finding, you know, those things. It's like when we're looking at just quality at bats, you know, those things start to add up and, and start to add up to getting some runs in. Um, and so, yeah, like, do we want to have more time waiting? Yeah, that's the, that's everyone does. Um, but also you're going to, we're also facing all American pitchers and we're facing, um, really great teams that are, that are also going to get the job done on their side. So the thing I, um, really happy about is that we're still finding new ways to win and I think we're still growing as a team um and so when you watch us you know from the start to now or even from the start of SEC season to now um we keep getting better every weekend um and and that could be said for every facet of our game um and so I I just think that how tough this game is how hard it can be all those things this this team has um stayed the course and just continued to find ways to continue to grow and keep playing better softball each weekend Melissa Courtney good morning, good morning. um I wanted to follow up kind of what what Ethan asked about the pitchers was there a was there a moment or a time where you remember like okay, I think we've turned a corner as a staff, or was it like you said, just individuals stepping up when they needed to? I think it's individuals stepping up when they needed to. Um, you know, I think we're, we're very much, um, as a staff, very much in the moment. Like we just have to figure out what we need to do to um, counter this offense today. Um, and And it's all hands on deck. You know, I think the thing that is, is really great is there's not an ego on this staff. They know that they're better together. Um, they know that they make each other better. 
Um, they are fine to hand the ball to the next because they know that the next one's going to come in and have their back and give a different look. And, and, and so no matter what role they've had, um, they've embraced it. Um, and so it's, it's never been something where we sat down and said, this is what we need to do. Like collectively, this is what we need to do. It, it's just like, Hey, like let's win the game we're in. Let's, let's worry about the next pitch. Um, and just really worry about being our, our best that day and, and giving our team a chance to win. Um, that's all it ever is, is let, you know, if we do our job, it's giving our team a chance to win some days that's zeros and some days that's seven. Um, and so give them a chance to win, compete, set a good tone. Um, and they've done that more often than not. Looking ahead to this last weekend with Ole Miss, uh, not to totally bring up last year, but you went into that final series against Missouri, which was a little and laid an egg team in, yep. in the league and lost. And so how do you not, the, I don't say you bring it up, but like not try to slip up against Ole Miss as you guys try to be a top four seed in this SCC tournament. Yeah. Well, we've, we've put ourselves in a good position to, to play ourselves into that. Um, I, I think there's a lot of contributing factors with that last series last year. Um, it wasn't our best. They were, they were playing really well. They were, you know, fighting for something. I think that's something that you could look at similarities of, of this, of this coming weekend is, is when you're facing a team that's kind of fighting for their life per se, you know, you just never know what version you're going to get. And, and so I think what, what our team's done, what this team has done really well is not get caught up in, in all the extras of a series. Um, just focusing on what we do and focusing on who we want to be. Um, we've, we've, you know, dove into our prep. We are prepared for, for what they do. And, and mostly it's, it's figuring out what do we need to do to win? Like, what, do, what do we need to do as Arkansas Razorbacks, um, to win? And, um, and so we'll just continue to focus on that. Um, and, I mean, hopefully it doesn't, you know, play out like the end of last year. That's like the one, uh, the one, you know, series in our last 16 that, you know, that's the one we dropped, but, you know, they just got to fight and and do their jobs this weekend. Yeah, what? I, oh, I muted myself. What is the answer to that? When you say figure out what we need to do to, to beat Ole Miss coming in here and, and play our game, what does this matchup look like? Well, this matchup's a little unpredictable. Um, and it's, you know, they have quite a few arms that they use. They they rotate them quite a bit. So it's it's making quick adjustments. Um, it's being prepared for whoever they throw and and then and then when they make that change, being ready for that. Um they are not necessarily an offense that puts a lot of you know, they don't go in motion a lot. So it's a lot of, a lot of stand and swing. We have, they have a couple slappers, but so it's just preparing for what they're going to do. And and then us knowing what we need to do to counter that um, just like any game. And so we, we we're working through their offensive lineup for our pitchers, um, getting them prepared on how we're going to attack them to start. And then they know we'll just make adjustments as we go. Um, so it's, just, you know, we're preparing just like we do every week. We we dive into video, we we get them ready for what it looks like and get ready to make quick adjustments. Courtney, thank you. Uh-huh. Eric. What did you learn about yourself this year handling this pitching staff? Because you've brought up it was it hasn't been smooth with injuries and things like that. It's a different way of having success, more of a staff. Uh, with different roles than maybe in the past when you had one or two pitchers you leaned on? What did you learn about yourself as a coach with the pitchers this year? Well, first I need to say congrats, Mr. 600. <laughs> oh. um, I'd rather talk about that. Let's talk about that. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but congrats. That was really incredible. And it was uh, really fun to see um, them celebrate you. So Thank you. Um, congrats. Um, what did I learn about myself? Um, I learned that, um, I, I learned kind of patience, um, not, not a, not a ton. I think that's what you have to have, um, as a coach in general, as someone that coaches pitching, um, as a mom, you know, like all those things, you know, and, and so patience and, and grace. And so with them, um, pitchers have the, um, 
just, they want to be perfect. Um, they want to be perfect. And so it's just figuring out, you know, that mental piece with them and encouraging them. But, um, it's also just, you know, this group, you didn't, we didn't have to do too much coaching of them buying into each other and knowing that, um, the strength is going to be and how strong they are around each other and how they support each other. Um, they knew that, and that's kind of the name of the game at this point, I think for, for this staff, um, you know, I think that you, how you handle the unexpected in general is as a coach and as a team, um, how you handle the, the adverse situations, uh, the things that don't go exactly like you thought they were going to go. Um, I think that's everything. And I think when you look at our year, it hasn't gone how we expected it. You know, I think that we came out thinking, okay, we need our pitcher. We need, we're going to give our, our, our young pitching staff time to settle in, you know, and, and we're going to be able to do that. Well, it didn't go as expected and they had to dig in in really high leverage situations right out of the gates. Um, and they handled that really, really well. Um, and so I think it's, it was a trial by fire. I think it was like a, a grow up really fast and figure out how to be effective. Um, and then that's something that they've just held on to. Um, and, and I think when the, the biggest growing area for this group is like, when you don't have that great day, figure out how to be effective in that day. Um, and if you have a day that gets away, leave the day there. Um, it doesn't mean like, okay, you had a bad day. You're a great pitcher that had a bad day. And, and so it's, it's just them picking each other up and, um, and just, you know, figuring out a way to compete and, and give the team the best that they have that day. Um, and they have, they've done that. I'm, I'm really, really proud of them. Brett. You're yeah. the only conference. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Brett. Eric no, wasn't you. done. I was just going to say, Eric always has more than one question. Done. Come on. Uh, no, I just want to ask, because you're the only, I do, especially after being like congratulated for 600 games <laughs> broadcast. You're the only conference when you get it, when you get into conference play, you're playing an NCAA tournament team every weekend, literally, basically. How do you make sure you play consistently there and avoid those peaks and valleys, which is very easy to fall into when you're playing that kind of uh, competition? Well, I think that that's what we sign up for when we play in this conference. We play, we sign up to play the best um, and have to compete against the best um, every game. Um, I, I don't think we avoid the peaks and valleys. I think we embrace them and figure out how to be our best in that um, because there are stretches that we have not been firing and we've had to find different ways to win. And, and, and so, and while also knowing like our, we still, okay, we, we weren't our best and we found a way, or when we, when we drop a game, okay, well, this is what happened and this is how we need to respond. And this is, and so I think it's, it's just making sure that we're, we're learning and growing through that, but it's never, um, who we are. Um, and so it's, and it's just, this team's responded to that. I think that you can get caught in like, oh my gosh, this game, and it can drag you down or you can respond and want to be better and, 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 and that's what this team's done. Um, and so I, I think that it is a grind. This conference is a grind, um, but we know that when we sign up for it. And so it's just, how can we be consistent? How can we find new ways to win? How can we win on days we're not our best? Um, and, and whilst not losing our um, motivation or our, you know, optimism towards working towards our best. Um, and, and so I think that's team's been able to put together a really great resume, a great conference season is that, you know, when we don't play our best, it doesn't, they don't lose their optimism towards working towards that. Um, they just use it to be better the next time. Brett. And Courtney, kind of a variation of what you've been asked, but it strikes me while well, you and baseball are your own silos, you guys do things similar in that you found different ways to win. You you're comfortable in two, one, three, one win, wins. Is there something to that this late in the year when you've played so many close games, but you've been able to win series where there's a little comfort, maybe when other teams start to panic, when, when games are close late because you've done it so much. I hope so. <laughs> sure. I hope so. No, I, you know, I, my, 
my dad always said for longest time is one run, one run wins, our character wins, one run games, our character games. And, um, and it, and it, it's never been more apparent than now when it's such an offensive game and, and you don't see a lot of low scoring one run games, you know, and, and it is, it's, it's, trusting yourself and having the level of confidence, especially, you know, when we are on those one run games on the road and you don't have the ability to throw the last punch. Um, and it's, it's just trusting each other and, and trusting your, your team's ability to, to win those games. Um, and win those games, maybe when you're not firing, but you have to figure out how to shut the door. Um, so yeah, I think that there's a lot to be said for a team that, you know, knows how to win those close games, knows how to finish, um, knows how to win games in different ways. Um, but any comparison that people give us to baseball, I'll, I'll embrace because, um, they, they're, they kill it over there. And Dave's you know, this is our last uh, plus broadcast on Friday night. It struck me that maybe we haven't discussed Morgan enough. Can you maybe explain her communication challenges and how you communicate with her with the hearing and whatnot and, and the extra layer that that involves? Um, I'll gladly talk about <laughs> Morgan. I don't know if we have talked about her enough and the, and um, not just the year she's had um, overall, the SEC season she's put together, um, but even more just like who she is and what she brings to the team. I think there there's challenges, but and I, I think that um, I think there's times that some she hasn't gotten the the um, attention that she's garnered because of the uncomfortable nature of not knowing about the communication piece, if that makes sense. And and so I, I think that she does a tremendous job when I think the team does a really great job of communicating with her for Morgan, if if she's not looking at you, she doesn't know you're, you're talking to her. Um, and, and that is the biggest hurdle of the communication. Um, and, and that's, and that's nothing, that's nothing. Um, and so she does a really great job. The team does a really great job. I know how to communicate with her at this point is, is just more than anything. You just have to get her attention. Um, and then, and then she's, she's really good at, at, um, well, she's really good at reading lips. Um, it's actually the, the only time that there's actually a reason to, um, as a coach, cover your mouth. <laughs> we always say like, do we have like professional lip readers around here? Um, we actually do in our dugout, but she's, she's really good at reading lips. Um, she could read, you know, energy and, and all of those things. Um, but once you get her attention, there's really not a communication breakdown. Um, she does a really great job and the team does a really great job. We've had to work through some things just on the field of like, fly ball priorities, pop-up priorities, right. um, things like that. Um, she works with the catcher of, with Kennedy of like pointing instead of necessarily like giving the verbal cue. Um, so those are things we worked through early. Um, and then she's really good at, at asking for what she needs and communicating um, with, with uh, her like teammates and me of what she needs. And once you know how to, how she operates, it's really easy. But it's interesting because the dugout chatter, she probably doesn't hear. The crowd at the biggest moments, maybe she doesn't hear. And then there is the the bunts, the pop-ups and whatnot, where, you know, there would normally be just verbal communication that you guys have one extra layer that I think is is sort of fascinating because maybe at this time of the year, it's kind of old hat, but there may be a moment that pops up every once in a while that's hard when you can't immediately yell or say something. Yeah, I, I think we just worked through that. I think the funny thing, sorry, I was smiling when I was listening to your question because um there's times when we're in games and and uh the other teams are like trying to like rattle you know they try to rattle a pitcher and they're like ball three ball it's like she can't hear you you know like good try you know um but you know we were in you know one of the the loudest environments we played in this year was at Georgia and um and we were that's when we actually uh asked her the question like after the game you know that first game um, it got really, um, really loud. It, there was high pressure moments. And after the game, we're like, what, what do you hear? Because for Morgan, um, she, she's 95% deaf. So she can hear like airplanes. Like that's like the level of like what she can hear. And so we were asking her about, about Athens. And she said, that's the loudest environment she's ever played in. Um, she, she doesn't necessarily, um, 
hear like specific things, but she can hear like, like the loudness. Um, and so, um, but it's always interesting, like a couple, you know, I think it was Alabama. I couldn't, I kept losing my voice every day and I'm a verbal coach. So I like sit on the side and I not only like do the signs, but I, I encourage them. I yell, I'm like, come on, Morgan, you got it. And then like my voice is cracking. I'm losing my voice. And I sat over there with, with Matt and Gib and I'm just like, why am I wasting my voice when she can't even hear my encouragement? You know, it was just like, okay. And Matt's like, uh, yeah, it's like, why are you cluing in on this in like the fourth inning? And, you know, but, um, it's, it's just interesting. She does such a great job and her story is really inspiring because with the challenges that she's had, speak of the devil, um, she just walked by, but with the challenges she's had and, and the people counting her out, it's only fueled her and it's only, um, you know, made her stronger and, um, her, her story is just really inspiring. You just, you root for her. You, uh, you want her you know, you always want your players to to prove people wrong and be their best. Like you just want her to prove everyone wrong and just like shove it, you know? No, I love that. I appreciate that. I think it's something we need to probably spend a little more time with during a telecast because of all the things you mentioned, you know, just the uniqueness, the challenges, overcoming any, you know, it's a scary game at times if you can't hear maybe the crack of the bat or the conversation and to be able to overcome that and put the season forward she has in the SEC is pretty amazing. It's incredibly amazing. Um, I think she's at a point too, where she's the most comfortable talking about it. What do you say? Yeah. Um, and, and I, um, I think for, I, I don't think that she wants that to be her story, like her only story. Um, but I think it's, it's huge. Um, and I think she's never been more comfortable talking about it. Um, and I, I, I think it's a, it's a challenge that she's embraced and she's just been stronger for, but my, her story is incredibly inspiring. Ethan. Yeah, really quick. Uh, just talk about Morgan. It is senior day weekend. Will you spend a little bit of time talking about each of your seniors and their contributions uh, to the program? I'll just a light question to end with. Um, well, I'll start with Morgan because, um, we were, we were just talking about her. It's, um, I wish I just, you know, I wish with, with some of these that came in for just one year, I just wish we had more time. She's someone that I wish I, I had the privilege to coach for much longer than a year. Um, and I, I think for her, you know, when we looked in the portal for, um, to add some depth to pitching, the thing that jumped off the, the page without knowing her is that she had been a workhorse and she has a really good drop. It's, it felt like something that um, we needed to, to round out our staff, but we also needed someone that had the experience and someone that we felt like we can make better. Um, and, and for Morgan, since day one, she has just been a sponge. Like she just wants to be her best. She is incredibly coachable. Um, she's fiery. Like she has that edge and competition that you want, um, all your players to have, but especially your pitchers, like you want them to have that edge and that fire. And, um, and, and for her, it's, it's, she just literally wants everyone to be so good around her and she wants to win. And it's not about her and anything that she does. And, um, and when she gets fiery, everyone just like feeds off that, like you can't help, but like, just like have fire and be excited and have, have passion when you're watching Morgan and playing around Morgan. Um, and she's that way every single day. Um, <clears throat> now she's kind of a grandma, like she has the aches and pains. And so if you ask Andrew, she's, you know, making Andrew, um, or her his paycheck. Um, but she, she knows her, she knows who she is. Um, she knows how to elevate her game. Um, she's going to give you a hundred percent of what she has every pitch she throws um, on a daily basis in a bullpen, in a, in a live game, all of those things. And she loves the big moment. And, um, and that's what you want out of your pitcher. Um, but she's incredibly selfless. Um, just a, just, um, a tremendous human. Um, Nia is another one where, um, <clears throat> she just made a, a huge impact right away. Um, just in, in knowing who she is, the confidence that she has in her game, um, and, and she's, she's just fit in seamlessly. Um, 
she's elite in what she does. Um, and I, I think we're seeing her best version as a Razorback and, and still continuing to get better every weekend with the, you know, our competition keeps, you know, getting better and challenging us and she just keeps getting better. Um, but she has, uh, incredible tools, incredible hand eye, um, barrel control. Like I've never really seen consistently. Um, and, and just, you know, one of those players where you're like, shoot, I just wish we had more time. She, you know, belongs on the stage and, and has just been a huge addition. Um, Rylan, um, I mean, what's there to say about Rylan? Rylan's been, um, just a staple in this program, um, for five years and, um, the best call we got this summer was her coming back, um, because of her commitment to this program, what she's done, her journey, um, just staying committed to being a Razorback and just being, you know, really prideful in that, um, what she brings is so like reaches so far beyond, uh, the field, um, she brings us like a steady, calm, a confidence, and, um, she accepts everybody. She loves everybody. Um, she builds everybody up. Um, she's a worker. She's, uh, I mean, a huge heart and, and just incredibly talented. And, and I think this year is also a reflection of that, of it's not about her, it's about the team and just continuing to grind to be her best and then building everybody up around her um, to be their best and stay the course. Um, and just, she's been a huge piece of us continuing to grow to our best version. Um, and I, I just think that, again, I think she's just unique in college athletics. You just don't hear stories like her anymore. Um, and we need more Ryland Hedgecocks in, in college athletics. Um, uh, Kylie Halverson, I, it was, it was interesting because we were, I was asked yesterday, who our unsung hero was of the year. And I had never been asked that. And I was uh, stumped at first because I just was like kind of taken aback. There's not many questions that that stumped me and that one got me for a second. And and then it just like fit right away. G Money, we were sitting here going, who who is it? Who is it? And G Money came in and it's like the second, you know, she said, Kylie, I was like, oh my gosh, it's Kylie. She's the unsung hero of this year because when you ask a, a first baseman to, first of all, you can't ask many first basemen to be a second baseman. You just can't. No, no slight to first baseman and you just can't. But when we asked her to do it, um, she could have easily um, said, why me? She could have easily been, you know, kind of pissed about it and she embraced it. And that's the fit. That's the the piece that we needed this year to be our best. And, um, and, and we, we, we needed that. She embraced it. She has only gotten better. I mean, some of the plays she made at LSU are some of the best I've ever seen. And, um, and, and that's, that's Kylie. And, <clears throat> and uh, even, you know, this year, she just continues to get better every weekend. Um, she had a, like a little tough stretch offensively. And I think you see the maturity of her and letting the game come back and she's playing her best that she's played. Um, maybe in her career, maybe in her time as a Razorback, um, you know, the offense, you know, production that she's having, that she is our anchor on defense. Um, the way that she is playing second base right now is exactly what we needed to be our best. And um, and, and so I just, that's, that's Kylie. Um, and then Hannah Gamble, um, she's just, she's, she has, endured so much in her time here being an Arkansas kid and playing at the level that she's played um, with the personality that she has. She has pulled in so many directions. She has asked more than any player we've had um, and she's handled it as well and as beautifully as you can. Um, and it hasn't been without bumps. It hasn't been without added pressure. It She, she carries a heavy weight um, for this program in the state. And she just continues to show up for everybody every day. Um, she's someone that wears her heart on her sleeve, um, which is why you just gravitate towards her too. It's just, she has this, you know, this smile and this personality that just captures you right away. Um, and she, and then she plays at a really high level. Um, but I, I um, am proud of her as a, as a person. I'm proud of her as 
um, a competitor, her growth, the ability that she's given herself to just learn how to give herself grace and and fight for herself and find her voice. Um, I could go on and on because I think that she's had to uh, she's had to grow more than a lot because of of being in the public and and what the um, you know what the fans and the state asks of her and um, and she's she's done such a, a great job. She's not someone that really is afforded off days um, without extra. Um, not criticism, but a little bit of that. And, um, and she's just continued to grow and, and get stronger. Um, I will say that I, I need to brag about her because Hunter, our athletic director gives out an award every year of, um, the student athlete that best exemplifies what it means to be a Razorback and a champion for life. And Daniel, Danielle Gibson was, um, was awarded this award in her senior year, but he gave it to Hannah, um, this year, Hannah, and then a soccer player, B. Franklin. Um, and I, I think that's the best thing I can say as who Hannah is, is she just exemplifies what it means to be a Razorback and a champion, um, both on and off the field. Um, and she is so incredibly deserving of that award. That was really long. Sorry, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. I asked it. Thank you so much. All right. Do you have any other final questions for coach D? <clears throat> okay thank you thanks